are unscalable battle stones. How does Rhaenyra's jewelry play an important role in House of the Dragon? Usually when people want their audiences to pick up on something, they go with something that pops out at them. This can be immediate, like colors that clearly signify a particular emotion or action, or more buried beneath the layers, like say, a habit that you pick up on a few pages into the book and are required to focus on as it might come into play later. The thing with George R. R. Martin, though, is that literally every word he writes can have hidden symbolic meaning, and something that seems as innocuous as jewelry can signify a lot of different things. He literally turns Sansa Stark's bejeweled headgear into a murder weapon, so clearly we're dealing with someone who appreciates the details here, guys. And that is no different when it comes to Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen, whose jewelry has a lot to say even when she stays silent. So. Here's why Rhaenyra's jewelry plays an important role in House of the Dragon, explored. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's the begin. now is the queen. I've missed you too. What is the significance of jewels and precious metals in terms of symbolism? When it comes to the world of writing, everything can be used as a symbol or a metaphor, and it is no different for metals. George R. R. Martin's colorful fantasy world contains a lot of precious metals and gemstones, each with their own distinct significance. But in this video, we're only concerned with two in particular, gold and Valyrian steel. Gold, as you might know, is really good for you if you want to become rich. Gold is a symbol of wealth and importance, and having lots of gold will mean you get tons of importance in your lifetime as well. House Lannister has built its entire personality off the maxim of, have gold will spend, thanks to the fabled gold veins of Casterly Rock. The Westerlands are the richest region in the Seven Kingdoms because of their many gold and silver mines, which makes sense because most of the known world's currency is stamped in gold and silver, but while gold as a currency signifies financial strength, gold as an ornament signifies opulence. Consider this for a moment. Why does a suit of armor require gold in the first place? It's not a particularly sturdy metal, it's expensive as hell, and it is literally the best loot for your opponent should you manage to get yourself killed. And yet? Plenty of knights and lords in Westeros and beyond incorporate gold in their armors. For instance, Prince Aemond Targaryen, who was just introduced in Episode 6 of House of the Dragon, owns a suit of armor that is black as night with gold chasings. The captains and sergeants of the free companies would wear their worldly possessions on their person to flaunt their wealth. Gold is also associated with vanity, greed, and lies. Tyrion Lannister once mused that Littlefinger was a man who had truly armored himself with gold, as it was his financial expertise that had gained him so much power in such little time. He also noted during that same musing that his brother Jaime's armor and sword were but gilded steel, blatantly admitting that the Lannister lion's armor of gold was but a cheap trick. And kings who wore crowns of gold tended to show different styles of leadership based on the design and grandiosity of their crowns. King Aegon the Unworthy and Ares, the Mad King, wore the same crown, a heavy red gold monstrosity that was the definition of opulence. Both of them went down in history as the worst Targaryen kings ever, Aegon for his sinfully indulgent nature, and Ares, well, for his madness. By contrast, King Jaehaerys wore a simple crown of yellow gold in a circlet inlaid with seven gems that represented both the faith of the Seven and the Seven Kingdoms. His reign was the most peaceful reign Westeros has ever known under the Targaryen dynasty, and his successor Viserys took on not just his crown, but also his legacy of goodwill and prosperity, giving the realm more peaceful times. It is with this crown that Rhaenyra will crown herself in House of the Dragon. Well, not exactly, but you get what we mean. By contrast, Targaryen kings who wore a Valyrian steel crown synonymously stood for one thing across the board, war. Aegon the Conqueror wore a Valyrian steel crown inlaid with rubies that was worn by Maegor the Cruel, then Aegon II, whom we will see wear it in House of the Dragon, and lastly, it was worn by King Daeron, the first aka Young Dragon King, who fought a war to win Dorne and fought a war to lose it along with his crown and his life. Valyrian steel has a deeper significance than simply being the best material to make weapons with. 
However, it is synonymous with the heritage and power of the Valyrian Freehold. We all know that Valyrian steel swords are the prized possessions of noble families all across the world, and they would rather kill themselves than give up their rare swords. But swords aren't the only thing that steel can make. Now, are they? In a simple chapter of The Winds of Winter called The Forsaken, Euron Greyjoy reveals that he somehow has armor made out of Valyrian steel. That's right, an entire armor made out of the stuff. People didn't believe him when he said he had been to Valyria before, but when Aeron Damphair saw that armor, he believed right away. Valyrian steel is associated with magic, sorcery, and above all, the fire and blood that courses through the veins of a dragonlord. And that is where Rhaenyra's jewelry becomes an important piece of the story. Damon never touched me. How does Rhaenyra's jewelry reflect her moods and thoughts? In Fire and Blood, we are told that Princess Rhaenyra had a habit of playing with her rings whenever she got anxious, which is an accurate reflection of how people with anxiety try to cope with their thoughts. But it's her jewelry in House of the Dragon that more accurately reflects the role of precious metals in symbolism and how Rhaenyra's necklaces tell a story. In the first episode of House of the Dragon, we see Rhaenyra wearing a simple circlet of yellow gold encrusted with gems. She wears this as she spends her time lying on Alicent's lap and brushing off history lessons, and when she enters the throne room upon her uncle's return. This is where her jewelry changes. Damon, who was known to bring gifts for his niece from his foreign trips, brought her a necklace made out of Valyrian steel and draped it across her neck, telling her that she now owned a piece of her heritage. She began wearing that necklace thereafter bringing it with her to the heir's tourney, where Daemon was set to fight and later to the royal hunt. She wore it during her courtship and then throughout Daemon's stay at King's Landing, when he returned from the Stepstones, but immediately discontinued wearing it afterwards because her deliance with Daemon had been discovered. Rhaenyra reverted to wearing gold once Daemon was exiled. If you revisit the scene where Alicent confronts her about her night out with her uncle, she is wearing the exact same necklace that she was wearing in the opening stages of the first episode, as if she was trying to use their sisterhood to curry emotional points, which as it turns out, she pretty much was. She has continued to wear gold since, and her lies have continued since, with every waking move that she makes fraught with deceit and a hidden agenda to boot. Sorry for sounding like Alison Hightower here, but it is true. Just because Rhaenyra is our protagonist doesn't mean she's all good. But here's the thing, if you guys paid close attention to the opening sequence of House of the Dragon, then you would know that the symbol that occurs on Rhaenyra's place in the Targaryen family tree is the exact same one that is on the necklace that Daemon gave her. So, even though she wears some fantastic gold pieces and a ridiculously decked out piece that has all the sigils of the Great Houses of Westeros on it towards the end of the first episode, the one thing that truly defines her nature is a simple necklace made out of dragon steel. Rhaenyra Targaryen has the blood of the dragon, we've known this from the beginning, and that blood runs thicker than anything else in the world. Though the necklace is in hiding for now, we are sure it will pop back up once again when she marries Daemon and has children with him. Because after Viserys' death, which shouldn't be a spoiler to anyone by now, there will be nothing left for her to do but wage war on her half-brothers, like her ancestors had on their enemies. Rhaenyra will claim her grandfather and her father's crown, but wear her husband's gift to the Dance of the Dragons, and show the realm who she really is. This is why her jewelry is so important to the story, because it tells a story in itself. Marvelous Verdict to be completely honest, it isn't just Rhaenyra's jewelry that tells a story. Viserys keeping his first wife Emma's ring and clutching it into his moments of weakness and vulnerability says a million words that, if uttered, would break the sincerity of his grief. We are pretty sure that there will be more such instances where a character's accessories ends up playing a big part in their characterization, like Larry's strongest fireflies, and we will be here to break it all down for you. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.